Well, hello and welcome back. This is Anna Kidney. This is the third video in the live uh, Facebook Live series. And today I'm going to take you through clearing some fears of vulnerability and fears of intimacy and commitment. Uh, this um, Facebook Live is designed to help you for kind of prepare for the meditation evening that we'll be doing uh, this uh, this Thursday evening, so tomorrow in London. Um, so this is going to give you a taster of what you, to expect um, on the evening. So I see people are joining us, so hello, hello. Lauren, hello Lauren, Lucy, Christina, Sharuk, Jennifer, hi Jennifer, hello my lovely. Okay, so, um, so this is going to be an interactive uh, Facebook Live. So obviously share as much as you feel you want to share. Obviously everyone can see your posts, whatever you share, that you're happy for everybody else to see that comment. Um, so I'd just like to get some kind of feedback from you guys in terms of, in terms of um, attracting a soulmate. Um, what are some fears that come up for you in regards to being vulnerable with somebody? Um, fears around intimacy and any fears you have around commitment. So I'd love to hear what kind of blocks or challenges you guys have got. So when I'm doing the energy clearing with you, uh, then I know specifically how to um, address those issues for you and get you unstuck, unstuck. So uh, people come to me uh, for two main reasons. The main reason they come to me is uh, for soulmates. Either they're single and they're looking to find their soulmate, they're wondering like, where is he, when is he? Uh, fears around growing older and, and wanting to have a family and, and wondering where the soulmate is. And the second thing people come to me is for money. That's the kind of the, the second major thing that people come to me for. And uh, so in Feta Healing, we have a really wonderful um, course called the Growing Relationship Class. And this class is designed to clear your fears of um, um, attracting a soulmate, fears around commitment. So um, the fear of um, being committed in a relationship can even stop you from attracting a soulmate in the first place. So let me give you an example. So if you, for example, growing up as a child, saw your parents um, in a dynamic where perhaps the father was the dominant one, the mother was submissive, where the mother was feeling controlled, where the mother was perhaps you know, the stay-at-home mom looking after you, know, you and your siblings, where she would felt belittled, where she felt controlled, suppressed, and denied by her husband. That became the, I guess, the template for what marriage looked like for you. And so when you saw that dynamic of what marriage is, what a commitment is, you thought, well, no, thank you very much. Somewhere that, that little girl inside you made a promise to yourself that you will never marry, you'll never have a husband like your dad because you don't want to be trapped and imprisoned and suppressed the way your mother was. And so here you are now as an, a grown woman trying to attract a soulmate, going from relationship to relationship. Maybe you're attracting really controlling guys, perhaps possessive guys, guys who are very jealous, very jealous. Um, and maybe even experiencing verbal or physical abuse as a result. And so what you're doing on a subconscious level is repeating the patterns of what you saw in your parents. Okay? So this fear of commitment may even stop you from attracting a soulmate in the first place. So this fear is an important one to clear. So something I'm going to do with you this evening is to address this template that you have about what you think a, a committed relationship, relationship is, what marriage actually means in a modern day world, uh, and any fears that you have of fears of um, controlling or dominating uh, men. And so that's, consequently, that's where some of the patterns are occurring for you in your life. And uh, vulnerability, vulnerability and intimacy. So in the Western world, um, I don't know whether I'm getting older or not, but um, things were back, were different in my day. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So um, what you see in magazines, in the TV, what you see in like music film clips. Um, my daughter's seven and she's getting into music now. And you know, I started putting up some of these um, YouTube uh, video clips of the songs of you know famous singers um, like you know um, Tay Tay and Rihanna. And then when I saw the video film, the actual the, the video um, the YouTube uh, film clips for these songs, I was horrified. I was horrified at what was I guess being promoted, where there was um, a lot of nudity, um, a lot of women being in very um, submissive positions, uh, the way they were dressed was very exposed and basically, in my opinion, they just looked slutty, basically. So maybe I'm against being conservative, um, but it just didn't leave anything to the imagination. So my daughter, who's seven, she's liking the song, she's liking the music, because obviously these, these jingles are very catchy, and she's watching these young women basically prostituting themselves you know, on these film clips, and she thinks that is what it is to be a beautiful, sexy, attractive woman. And so I catch my daughter occasionally in some of these moves that she's doing, which are completely inappropriate. 
completely inappropriate. And so consequently, a lot of young girls are getting this wrong idea of what it is to be a sexual being, what it is to be beautiful, what it is to be sensual, but what they've been shown in the media. So they've been uh, seen as property, okay, as, as a piece of meat that can be flaunted. And this is, as a mother, as a mother is actually quite disturbing. So what does it actually mean to be a, a sexual, sensual being where you are not um, prostituting yourself? So this is where we're going to get into uh, an understanding of what it is to be you know, a sacred, divine, feminine goddess. This is what we're going to be activating this evening. Now, I know sometimes we get guys on um, these calls as well, so um, I, I won't leave any guys out. Obviously, I'm not um, you know, out to get uh, or to complain about guys. I have a wonderful husband. He's very respectful. Uh, he's an amazing man, an amazing father. So there are good men out there. But if these men are seeing these film clips of these women in these very submissive positions, then they're thinking that is appropriate of the way you would treat a woman with, with disrespect. Um, and some of the clients that come to me, and I heard this concept, um, I heard, first time I heard this concept was when I watched uh, Sex in the City. It was the movie and it was, I think it was the, the, the last one they did. I think the last one was the second last one. And the, yeah, and it was one of the episodes. And the concept of, pardon my, my, my swearing, but a fuck buddy. And now, again, maybe I'm old and old fashioned. Um, I like to date a guy first, get to know him, fall in love and then make love. Uh, before I jump into bed with a stranger. Uh, so, and I'm um, getting clients who are coming to me who have this kind of relationship, but I have somebody that essentially is a fuck buddy, somebody that they sleep with, that, there's, that they think that there is no emotional attachment, that there's no connection. It's just someone to, to kind of satisfy you. You use them, they use you, no attachments, because maybe you're really busy with work and you haven't got time for a relationship. So what happens on a physiological level is when you have uh, intimate relations with someone, um, you are exchanging DNA. You're exchanging DNA. And this is something we talk about in our dating classes, is when you sleep with someone, you exchange DNA. And along with that, you also exchange things called soul fragments. So these pieces of your soul are exchanged with this person, which is why perhaps you've had other relationships in the past, but you can't quite shake off that person, that somehow they're still in your mind and you don't know why you keep thinking about them. You broke up years ago, but you're still thinking of that person every once in a while. It's because one, you have bits of their DNA in your body, and the second thing is you have bits of their soul fragments. So this is something we're going to do uh, this evening to release some of this DNA from one night stands, from some of the fuck buddies, um, and where perhaps you allow yourself to be disrespected and used for sex for immediate pleasure. And 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 you're you're physically, or maybe consciously, maybe saying yes to this kind of um, activity, but on a on a deeper level, your body is being filled feeling like actually it's being violated. So whenever I introduce scan women who have had this kind of intimacy with a man where it's just it's just for sex, uh, I, I literally see the, 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 the womb um, and the vagina literally crying and weeping because it's being disrespected, it's being violated. Uh, so this is where about we, we, we want to clear some beliefs about sexuality, what it is to be intimate with a person. And when you are intimate with somebody, you, sh you connect with, with all the chakras. That's the highest level of intimacy. We're in that moment of, of, you know, of bliss when you're experiencing that, that height of orgasm where you're experiencing not just a vaginal orgasm but a full body orgasm is when all the chakras are connected. So it's mind, body, and spirit. All of you is completely participating in that particular experience with that beautiful soulmate uniting. And this is why they call it making love. They don't call it fucking, they call it making love. Uh, and this is the, as Vana says, you know, the greatest love of all is to love one person and one person exclusively. Uh, and rather than sharing your body with complete strangers where you're simply disrespecting your body temple. And so anyone who's allowing themselves to have this kind of relationship on a deeper level, there's some subconscious beliefs about one, your self-worth. You don't believe that you're worthy of something of a high nature. So this evening, I'm going to activate within all the ladies this evening, the goddess archetype, the queen archetype. So if you think of yourself as the goddess or the queen, a queen would never allow herself to be used. She would have her king and her king would come into her chamber. Okay? It, would, it would be prearranged and he would come into her chamber. It would be like making an appointment, okay? scheduling to have a uh, quality time with his, with his, with his queen. And the queen um, is, is served, she is served, she's nurtured, she's, she's respected. 
okay, this is the energy with which we want to activate so that you can attract the best summit possible to you so that you can feel respected and honored on every level of your being. So I'm not going to get you guys to share, you know, what kind of sex you've been having. Obviously, it's not appropriate for a Facebook Live. Uh, but from the experiences I've heard from the clients that come to me, um, it is very disrespectful. It's very fast. It's very quick. Sometimes it's very violent. And the woman feels very, very disrespected. And they're wondering why they can't attract a soulmate because they're terrified. They're terrified of being broken Emotion emotionally, physically, spiritually, and mentally. They're physically broken. And so I have to kind of pull out these soul fragments, pull out these you know, bits of DNA, and literally put these, put these women back together again and increase their self-worth so that they can um, really honor themselves as women and attract the best possible soulmate to them. So I'm going to go, obviously, if you've been on the previous uh, live Facebook um, uh, videos I've done in the last couple of days, I'm kind of prepared you for this work. If this is your first video going, oh my God, who is this woman? What is she on? Right, this might be a bit intense for you. Um, so if this is, you know, if this is too much for you, then I understand you, you need to leave the Facebook video and watch maybe the other two to kind of get you going before you delve into this deeper, deeper work. This is going to be emotional work for some of you. Some of you may be, you know, um, getting quite teary um, when we start to clear this. It's all part of the process. If you feel like you need to cry, allow yourself to cry. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to tune into everyone that's going to be listening to this now as well as to the recording and see the work that I need to do with um, with the women. Okay, so first thing I need to do is I need to address your template, the template for what a marriage is, uh, what a, what a long-term commitment is. So I'm gonna ask the creator, the divine energy, universal intelligence, I'm gonna ask the creator to just release that version or template that you have of, of love and marriage and commitment and replace it with the highest truth and the creator of all that is. Okay, is that okay? Yes, you just say yes out loud. Obviously, I won't be able to hear you, but the divine is the sacred will. And so when you say yes, you're giving permission to make this change for you. So just simply releasing the old template that you have of marriage, a committed relationship, and replacing with a higher truth. <laughs> okay. All right, so some of you are thinking, what kind of like uh, energy clearing is this? Is this some sort of holy, holy religious version of sex where it's sex on Sundays, you know, just for procreation? No, ladies, no, this is not what we're talking about. <laughs> this is more of an evolved version, much more evolved version. Um, so let's, let's talk about the human body. So the creator of all that is, the divine energy, designed the physical body to experience all forms of pleasure. This is part of the, the human experience. We ex experience the full, full spectrum of emotion and physicality. We experience from one extreme physical pain. So when you fall over and you graze your knee or you, you know, cut your finger with, with a knife, you experience pain. When a, a, a guy breaks your heart, your heart breaks. Okay. On the other end of the spectrum, the creator also designed this body for pleasure. So when you eat certain foods and you're tasting it with your tongue, and you're, 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 you're kind of romanticizing it through your teeth and the textures um, and absolutely enjoying the food that you are eating, whatever that favorite food is for you. So maybe it's chocolate, but it's, you know, it's that, that, that silkiness of good quality chocolate, okay? Like lint, lint is my favorite chocolate. It's so silky and smooth and there's so much pleasure to be had for that really dark, you know, 70% cocoa. It may not be your, your favorite, but that, that level of richness um, that texture is incredibly pleasurable on the tongue. So it was des it's designed to be pleasure experience. The orgasm is also a sacred experience. There's nothing dirty, unholy, or smutty about the orgasm. Um, in the moment of orgasm, when two souls unite, when their chakras are connected, and you experience a full body orgasm, not just um, below the waist, I'm talking a full body orgasm, um, where your all your skin just tingles, it's designed to be pleasurable. But through history, particularly um, through many religious texts, um, se sexuality for women has been very much suppressed and denied and been made to be somehow unholy and unspiritual, that you shouldn't be enjoying uh, sex. So um, the highest truth is the credible that is the divine energy designed, created this physical body to experience earthly pleasure. And part of that is, is sex when it's used um, appropriately with, with that um, compatible soulmate, with your divine compatible soulmate then you experience that moment of bliss where two souls become one. Let me repeat that. 
when two souls become one, the greatest union of all. And in that union of, of bliss, where you are interconnected, you recognize the other person is you. Okay, we are one with everything. Maybe you understand that concept, maybe on a theoretical level, maybe on a spiritual level. Let's understand on a much deeper level. The other person is you. It's another expression of you. And so in that moment, you unite as one, as one, one energy moving together. So it's designed to be pleasurable. So when I'm bringing you through these, these um, I guess, downloads, we call them downloads or empowering belief systems, it's, a, it's for coming from a much higher place than that which you've been taught by perhaps religion. Where, where sex is being, um, is being made to be somehow shamed um, and hidden. Um, anyway, so let me move on. Okay, so anywhere that you feel that a committed relationship is a trap, a prison, or where you feel that you'll be a piece of property, can we release that now? Thank you. Okay, can a creative all that is teach and show what it is to be a sexual being? That you're worthy and deserving of enjoying sexual pleasure without feeling ashamed, without feeling humiliated, without feeling dirty or slutty. Can a creative all that is show you and teach you the highest understanding and definition of sacred sex and sacred sexuality. Thank you. Okay, all right, so um, for all the women watching this, I'm going to do a healing on your womb. Um, so some of you have had abortions um, and miscarriages. So I'm going to ask the creator that is just to release all the shock and trauma of uh, the abortion or the miscarriage. And I just want you to imagine breathing into that area, breathing into your womb, allowing that to be filled with light, letting go of all the sorrow, the sadness, the guilt. Okay, I'm going to release some of these religious beliefs like you should be punished or that you're evil or that you've murdered. I'm just going to release those beliefs. Is that okay? Thank you. This obviously won't apply to everybody. Um, but you, you may also be carrying the energy imprint of your mother or grandmother um, of any time they have perhaps had an abortion or a miscarriage. So you may be carrying their sorrow. So this healing goes up the generations as well. So anywhere that you're holding um, sorrow, pain, sadness, grief and shame from your ancestral line of abortions, attempted abortions and miscarriages. Good. Okay, we're going to be doing more deeper work um, on the meditation evening uh, tomorrow night in London. Um, but if you feel that there, if you feel that you're, there's still uh, unresolved issues, then I encourage you to make an appointment with a healing practitioner to go deeper in your individual in your individual case. Okay. Next, I'm going to ask the creator just to release any um, soul fragments and any bits of DNA that you're carrying from previous partners that no longer serve you. So anytime that you are intimate with a person and you're carrying their DNA or uh, soul fragments in your body, I'm going to ask the creator to release them. And also if they have your bits of DNA and your soul fragments, 
is to be cleansed to return back to you. Is that okay? Thank you. And you may see the flashes of the faces of these people as it's released. Yeah, good. Well done. Well done. Okay, so I'm going to release the need to punish yourself for all the Many mistakes, okay? So anyway, you feel like you made a mistake by dating the guy, sleeping with a guy. Okay, so I'm gonna, all those many mistakes, I'm going to ask just to bring that forgiveness. So forgiving yourself for getting yourself into that relationship when you, I mean, most of you knew that you shouldn't get involved with that person. Ignore your, your, your intuition. So that's released really, me to punish yourself. And the lesson for you is really to recognize and acknowledge your intuition. So you're always making a decision from the highest place of love rather than from desperation or fear or loneliness. Good. Okay, allowing the creative teaching to show what it feels like to respect and honor your body. And that you know how to respect and honor your body. And that you know what it feels like to have your, your body honored and respected by others. That you know how to nurture and take care of your body. what it feels like to live without feeling that you are trapped in your body. So anyway, you feel like you're feeling like you're locked or trapped in your body. Maybe you're feeling like I'm in the wrong body or I'm in the wrong sex. Okay, so I'm just going to release that if that's, if that's you. Okay, right, there's a lot of anger coming up. <laughs> okay, so anger is held in the liver. So I just want you to put your hand on your liver. Put your hand on your liver. I'm just going to focus on the energy in the liver. So all the anger that you have, all the anger and rage that you have towards men, maybe towards your father, um, towards to, even towards yourself, all the anger that you have for allowing yourself to be disempowered, anywhere that you allow yourself to be small or insignificant or worthless or belittled all the anger which which you gave when you gave power away to others I'm going to ask the creator to release this now and as I do I want you to feel yourself breathing into your liver breathe into the liver and some of you um, may be using alcohol as a way to suppress that anger just want you to breathe into the liver to see feel senses that is filled with this white light Feel the anger dissolving, washing away. What happened in the past is gone. You, you only have this moment now and what you're creating for the future. If you hold on to this anger, you'll create more of this in your future. So it's time to let this anger go. Bitterness, resentment, let it go. And use your breath, use your breath. This breath brings spirit into the body. With each breath. Release, release that resentment, release the anger, the hatred. Your true energy is the energy of love. That's your true vibration. And the more you release this anger, this resentment, the more space you make in your body for love. And you become a magnet for more love in your life, more loving relationships, friendships, soulmate, family. Well done, well done. Okay, 
as soon as he's still holding on to your anger, it's like your story, he did this to me, he's the bad guy. So if you hold on to that story, you hold on to the martyr of being the victim, you remain the victim and you'll create that pattern for the rest of your life. So what I want to ask you this evening is, do you want to hold on to that pattern? Is that guy worth it? Trying to blame him and punish him for what he did to you. Is it worth it by destroying future prospects of love? Hopefully the answer is no. No, it's not worth it. That person, what they did to you, it was a lesson for you. A lesson on perhaps learning to respect yourself. Maybe you're learning to be, respect yourself by being disrespected. Maybe you're learning how to assert your boundaries. How to say no. Maybe you were just lonely and scared and you didn't think you deserved better. Until it was too much to bear. So we're going to ask the creator to just forgive that situation, forgive that person for that painful lesson. Marking that lesson as complete now so that you can move forward. Knowing how to have healthy boundaries. Knowing that you, you can say no without the fear of being attacked or punished or judged, or even abandoned, you're allowed to say no. And we free you from your vows, oaths, contracts, to give away your power as a way to be loved, as a way to belong. Thank you. Okay, and as this energy comes in, you're going to feel like an opening in your solar plexus. It's the solar plexus chakra. This is your seat of power, your identity. So you may feel like a, a, like a whirring energy or a spin or an opening in your solar plexus as you claim your true power. And as this comes in, I'm going to activate this, this goddess queen archetype. So crave all that is commanded to activate the goddess queen archetype within all the women that are going to watch this and you're watching it now. In the highest and best way, thank you. It is done, it is done, it's done, show me. And as it comes in, it's going to come in through your crown chakra, the top of your head. It's going to channel down all the chakras and activate this ancient knowledge and wisdom in all your cells. Feel your cells opening as you activate this energy. So you can hold yourself in the highest regard. To recognize you are the goddess. You are the sacred feminine, beautiful, magnificent, powerful, sensual, confident, and you deserve to shine brightly. Showing you that it's now safe for you to be visible and you could be respected whilst being visible. Okay, you may feel your heart expanding, you may feel your shoulders opening as this comes in, you may feel your neck and um, head straighten, so your spine may straighten. And this just allows the, the channel of energy to flow much smoother. So when you shift your posture, you feel more in the goddess energy. You feel more regal. And this is not about being a prima donna or being, you know, queenie. It's not about that. This is about holding yourself in the highest regard as the sacred feminine. Good. Okay. So we all have guardian angels. We have between two to four guardian angels if you're a healer. And that's the kind of people I tend to attract as healers generally. Um, you'll have literally hundreds if not thousands of angels around you waiting to be of service. Uh, uh, the famous author Lorna Byrne says that there are a lot of unemployed angels because they can only help if they're asked. So I'm going to ask the angels to walk with you over the coming days and weeks to support you to maintain this, this, this goddess energy, 
to guide you as to how that would facilitate in your everyday life. So if you were the, the divine sacred goddess, how would you dress? How, what would you eat? How would you exercise? What kind of interactions would you have with men? So you, I'm going to ask your guardian angels to assist you in the unfolding of your new life as the goddess energy. What it looks like to be the goddess where you treat yourself with extreme self-care. Where you respect yourself and honor your body temple. And when you radiate that energy out into the world, you will attract the best soulmate possible to you. Because you do deserve the very best. You don't have to compromise. Second, so the creative ball doesn't teach you and show you that your vulnerability as a woman is your strength. Vulnerability is not a weakness. You're not a damsel in distress waiting to be rescued. You're a powerful, magnificent woman. Claim your right to be the divine, sacred feminine and all its power. Take a nice deep breath and open your eyes. Whew. Wow, I hadn't planned on going that deep, <laughs> but it's what you guys needed. Okay, so I'm just going to look through the comments and see how else I can serve you before we finish today. Right, so Jamie Rosler, can we do this for a new career or figuring out what we should do or want to do for the rest of your life? Absolutely, absolutely. Theta healing is a great place to start to find out your life purpose. So um, my expertise, I'm good, really, really good at two things. The first thing is um, helping with women with abuse, emotional, physical, mental, and sexual. I'm really good at healing that. I've had a lot of experience with that. Second thing is life purpose. I love connecting people with a life purpose. I do get men coming coming to you know for, for sessions with me um, and to class, but it's predominantly women. But life purpose is something that, um, yeah, I can definitely, definitely help you with. So we, um, the, the, the beginning journey for that would be a feeling basic course. So if you're completely new to fair healing, the feeling basic course would be a great start. You can find out more about that on my website at version.co.uk or you can come along to the meditation evening in London uh, this, um, this uh, Thursday evening. So I'm going to um, give you guys the link for the meditation evening. Um, so I think we still have a few tickets left. It's, it's almost sold out, guys. There's not many left now. Um, we have about yeah, close to 200 people that attend these events. Um, so it's going to be a huge event. The quantum field that gets created is massive. So if you're coming to manifest, you're going to be there sitting with 200 other people manifesting your soulmate or manifesting to create more love. So 200 people setting their intentions to create more love in their life is going to, it's going to literally rock the hotel, <laughs> if not the city. Uh, it's going to be magnificent and powerful. We'll also have a very special guest performer, uh, Todd Akinese. We'll have a guy. Be nice to balance some of that uh, female energy with some nice sacred masculine. He'll be taking you through um, a, a really beautiful gong bar. Okay, so um, yes, uh, Katka, you can watch this again. Absolutely. So this is going to be up on uh, on uh, on Facebook. So it's obviously live, so you have a chance to interact with me right now. Um, otherwise, yeah, you can watch the replay. But well, we're going to be done in about five minutes. Okay. So um, Elena is saying, what if the person I'm thinking is my divine time, is my divine partner? He told me he is not ready for a relationship. Should I exchange soul fragments too? Okay, let me just tune in. Yeah, he's scared of commitment. He's scared of the responsibility. He's scared that he has to grow up and be responsible. So that he has to be a good husband and provide for you, take care of you, um, you know, take care, care of the children. He's got some old fashioned beliefs about what it is to be a husband and a man. Uh, and he's fear, afraid to grow up, so he's afraid that he's going to lose his freedom. Um, so I would say bring him to meditation evening, and he can get a clearing, and that may shift his mindset to do with what a committed rela relationship is. Um, but um, what I'm hearing is I don't feel like you're ready to let him go. I feel like you're ready to let him go. There's some learning there for you. Um, so, yeah. So just know that there's more than one compatible soulmate for you. But when we talk about the um, the divine, the sacred divine partner, that's the one, the one. Uh, I'll talk more about that on the meditation evening on, on Thursday in London. Um, 
so you'll learn more about what the sacred divine partner is, but you have many, many soulmates, Elena. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah, this, this, this unfinished business net relationship is something we're learning through this. He's got some fears around commitment. He cares for you deeply, but he's scared. He's scared. So, <laughs> so this is actually, you know, we didn't really address the guys on, on um, the call today. Um, so um, in the Western world, men are taught, well, boys are told not to cry. They're called sissy or they're called weak. And so um, they're suppressed. And when, and when boys aren't allowed to cry, they literally swallow those tears. They get locked in their lungs. And as they grow into men, they become sort of um, emotionally disconnected. So they don't know how they feel. That what they tend to make their decisions from is a place from the head or their gut. They go from much, very much from gut instinct. And so when you ask some men how they feel about you, they just don't know because they're emotionally disconnected. They're afraid to feel their feelings. They feel that if they feel their feelings, that somehow they are weak. They are vulnerable. So if they feel that they're vulnerable and exposed, then somehow they're not really men, men. You know, they should be macho. They should be tough. They should be strong. And, you know, big boys don't cry. And this is one of the most destructive patterns in society that we have where we don't allow, allow our sons to cry. Um, so I have an 11-year-old boy, and I hold his tears as sacred. So when he cries, we acknowledge what's going on for him. You know, why is he crying? I want to know. Um, my son has a lot of water. Uh, an air in his sign, so he tends to be quite emotional anyway. He, he does get quite teary, but I never put him down and, and silence his tears. I want to know why is he crying? What's the matter? Um, so that I can acknowledge his tears, so I can help to, I can actually understand what's going on for him and how he's feeling, so I can have empathy for him, so that when he grows up, he will have emotional intelligence and know how he feels when he meets the right woman. Uh, and so, as I said, in Western society, me most men are, are very much disconnected from their emotions and then and suppressed because their tears were denied. And so now there's this new, um, you know, courses that the men can take to learn emotional intelligence. So essentially, it's connecting men to their emotions. Uh, this is something that we do on our feeling classes: is to help men connect with their feelings. So because your feelings guide you in your life, how do you know what decision to make unless how you what how you feel? So. Um, uh, I'm going to finish up with a really cool exercise before we go um, about how to trust your intuition, make good decisions. It's really cool, simple technique. So, okay, beautiful. Okay, Anna, Dal, hi Dal, hello my lovely. Um, hopefully I'll see you um, tomorrow for meditation evening. Sharuk, you've been on, on the call a few times. Welcome back. Tansy, Tansy has cleared this child, cleared childhood experiences from parents, damaging relationship. Amazing. Well done, Tansy. Well done. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our relationship problems start in childhood with mummy and daddy issues. Um, yeah, um, but it doesn't, this is what I want to stress, it doesn't have to take a long time. Some of you have been coming to these live um, calls the last few days and you're already seeing shifts in your energy and in your feeling. And I'm only spending half an hour with you. Imagine, you know, if you gave me, you know, three days, six days, how much we could achieve in that time. Um, Lucy's saying, wow, Anna, that was powerful, powerful and profound. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. I, I wasn't intending to go this deep and I wasn't pre prepared to be, I didn't even realize that, you know, I was going to be taking you down this route, but this is what the divine guided me to do for you this evening. Um, so yeah, Lauren's saying, thank you, Anna. Do we just have one divine life partner? So you have your, you have many compatible soulmates. You have one divine life partner. Yes. We're talking about like the one. Yes, you do. So the founder of Faith Healing, Vina Steibel, she was married three times before she met her current husband, uh, Guy Steibel. Guy Steibel is her divine life partner, but she had to go through three marriages and about 10 years to reach to him. Um, and there's always growth with the divine life partner. Um, a divine life partner shares your divine timings. Uh, we'll talk more about divine timings um, in our classes, but just know that there are, he there are things that you came here to do on this planet. And so if you have a soulmate that is in alignment with your divine timing, that life purpose, life mission, soul plan, a divine life partner will walk along with you in that path. Um, so that's what we're talking about. The one, the one. Um, uh, let's have a look. Um, okay, Lucy's saying, my date, don't want to have kids. We'll try and bring him tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Or, uh, yeah, um, yeah, well, Lucy, we're going to talk more about um, children when we get to the growing relationships class and fears of having children, seeing children as a burden or responsibility. Um, because, you know, children, you know, it's, they're there for life, you know, you can't take them back to the shop for refund. So <laughs> sometimes I feel like that as a mother. <laughs> 
but then I'm reminded how much I love my children and, 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 they, and they, they, they're my greatest teachers, I tell you. My children are my greatest teachers. Um, okay, uh, Susanna's asking, should I give another chance to my husband? So Susanna, hopefully you can come to the um, meditation evening. So we always ask the creator, should the relationship be saved? And, and if it should, how? So we can get guidance on how to save that relationship. So we look at what is the underlying pattern that's running between you two. What, where is the conflict? So I'm, I've mentioned this in other, other Facebook lives. Number one cause for divorce is money. So if you're fighting over money, you need to address your money beliefs. Because if you divorce him, the next soulmate, you're going to take your money problems with you. So if it's money, that needs to be cleared. So you can release so your fears around money and attract more prosperity into your life and, and grow and prosper together as a couple. Uh, the second uh, cause of divorce is abuse, uh, predominantly physical abuse and also mental abuse. So if that's going on, then obviously that's a serious issue and I encourage you to have a, a healing session with a practitioner. Um, so you can ask the creator, divine energy, should I give my, my, my partner another chance? Now, whenever you are asking that question, the other person also has to be willing. You can't be doing all the work. That has to be a, a joint effort. So if you're going to those, um, you know, if you're going to see a counselor or a therapist, he needs to come too. He needs to come too. And he's got to be willing as well. Um, and uh, it needs to feel like mutually agreed, basically, so that you're both doing the work. If it's just coming from you, then you're going to feel like you're dragging him to these appointments. He doesn't want to, and he's not willing. Um, then you need to, yeah, take, seriously have a think about uh, your future and what you would like, what you'd like for your future. Okay. Um, Orisami, hello, welcome back, my lovely. You've been on every single live. Um, hopefully, you've had lots of uh, revelations on these uh, on these uh, videos. I've definitely enjoyed doing them. Uh, Bhavna saying, "Hi, many of the women on my maternal side are either divorced or widowed in their forties. Is this a coincidence?" Yeah, there's a mm -hmm, yes, there's a pattern that's running up the ancestral line. A pattern of it's an old it's okay it's linked to collective consciousness and it's not it's in many cultures I see a lot of this in uh, Indian families where the woman is expected to kind of like be subservient to the man give away her power and just women get end up being fed up with being controlled and belittled and abused by men and so they finally find the strength to walk away some of these women stay in relationships because they're afraid of what the society will say they'll be shunned for um, divorcing a man but some of these women have been through quite a lot of pain I'm being shown quite a lot of pain and abuse and they just couldn't take it anymore they had enough and and they got divorced as a way to free themselves so it's a, a long line a genetic line of um, being um, submissive and it's a, it's, it's a cultural thing a genetic programming around the woman um, standing in the shadow of the man um, being respectful by being submissive um, and widowed as well so on a subconscious level sometimes the man will pass away to free the woman so she can experience freedom and claim her power. So in many cultures, women are now learning how to claim their power. And uh, we'll talk about that on the, the meditation evening tomorrow around what true power means. Now there's, there's Hitler power and there's Gandhi power. Now Hitler power is not really power, that's control. It's control through fear and submission. That's not power. True power is the Gandhi power where you inspire others, you empower others, and they follow because they want to, not because they're scared of you. Okay, um, that they're inspired by you and they, and, they, and they follow your lead because you are the, the living example of greatness and they aspire to that and they want to be in that energy. That's true power. So when you are in your true power as a goddess, then the right soulmate will come to you. You'll be a, a, a direct match, a direct vibrational match. So the basic principle of law of attraction is like attract like. So you've got to radiate the energy out. And if you're radiating out the energy of being you know, scared, you know, desperate to get a partner because you're hitting 40 and you're wanting children, um, then you're going to attract someone who's, you know, a guy that's going to basically use you because you're a vibrational match. But if you recognize, you know, you are this goddess, you are the queen, then you'll act, you know, you're that activating that energy within you, radiating that energy, you'll magnetize to you that king that will take care of you and serve you in the highest way possible. Now, we're not talking about turning a man to a slave, okay, so don't worry, guys. No, it's about what we're talking about is mutual respect, where you are respected by him and he respects you and you support each other. You support each other. In the ancient times, um, the, queen, the queen was um, privy to a lot of information that the king wouldn't share with anybody else. So the king would often go to the queen for uh, counsel. They, they would be not only husband and wife, but they would be almost business partners in reigning over the kingdom and to make wise, wise decisions 
for the benefit of all. So um, yeah, contrary to what you may have heard, they weren't just for you know the sake of, of breeding. They were very much groomed, um, groomed by uh, by um, you know the, their family to be to be this second in charge for the king to help him make wise decisions. So when we talk about like this perfect union that no one's trying to compete to be the, the, the leader, that you both grow together equally and you both support each other. That's when a relationship becomes sustained. That's when it becomes lasting. Because if someone's trying to get the ump, the, you know, the ump above another, say, for example, the woman is trying to beat the man, making him, him feel inferior, then he's going to feel like he's the child. Then she'll become sexually, he'll become sexually unattractive to her and then they'll just separate because she's made him weak and it's no longer attractive. Right? If he tries to get the up on her and make her submissive, she'll stay down, she'll be weak, and she becomes like almost like the child or the daughter, and that also becomes sexually unattractive. That submission goes even further, and if the woman is not strong enough, she'll stay there. She'll stay in that position and slowly crumble and become weak and small and just begin to tolerate this constant submission, or she'll have enough and free herself. But if she doesn't clear those belief systems, she'll take that pattern with her to the next relationship, the next relationship, the next relationship. Um, so I'm going to go much deeper into that uh, tomorrow. Um, okay, so Selma, you can't buy tickets because you don't have PayPal. You don't need PayPal to buy the tickets, uh, my lovely. You um, you don't need a PayPal account. It, you, you just you just enter your card details. You don't need to set up a PayPal account. You can buy tickets using that system, but you don't need a PayPal account. If you have problems still, then call the office in the morning, and uh, either Sabrina or Sarah will take your call, and you can just book the tickets online. But you don't need a PayPal account to. to pay by PayPal. Okay, Donatella, you're looking forward to the meditation? Of course, my goddess, of course. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to do one more question because we're running quite late now. Um, let's see, which is the one that's going to help the most people. Okay, so, um, okay. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so I was asked to ask you, why are you afraid to be loved? If you knew, why are you afraid to be loved? And just trust your first answer. Are you scared that you're not somehow not good enough? That you're not, you know, interesting or intelligent or pretty enough, or you're too young or you're too old? What excuse have you given to yourself for feeling that you are not lovable enough? That it's not possible for you to have love. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the greater to release any sabotaging patterns. So anywhere you are perhaps attracting unavailable men, maybe you're attracting people that, you know, obviously soulmates that necessarily aren't ready right now, we're having to wait. So any obstacles you've placed in the way as your excuse for really, for why you're really, really afraid to be loved. Okay, I'm going to ask the creator to just to, to release those now for you. So you know what that is, you know what you're creating in your life, what sabotaging pattern. Sure, it looks like and feels like to be love without fear. To feel powerful in being loved. Okay. Um, there's, there's an energy of ownership. I'm seeing like hooks and cords. So some of you've got like hooks and cords in your heart. I'm going to ask the, the creator just to pull any hooks and cords from your heart. It's like a like he's yanking on you, like no one else can have you but him, but he doesn't want you, which is not fair on you. So if you're feeling like you're not really free, that you can't let this person go, that you, you, you really want to move on, but you can't let them go, there may be a hook or a cord in your heart. So if that's you, I'm going to ask the creator just to unhook you from this person. You've given away your power. You've given away your body or ownership of you. I'm going to release that now. Use your breath. Let it go. It's now safe to let this person go. 
the math of lessons is complete. And so the awareness may come to you th this evening when you're sleeping, so in your dream state, you may have the awareness in the morning. So I would like you to do some journaling either this evening or in the morning, do some journaling, just 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes and just journal. And just write down your thoughts and feelings about the lessons you've experienced from past relationships. What do these soulmates teach you? Good lessons as well as negative lessons. And this will start to bring more awareness into your conscious mind of the patterns you've been creating and why they no longer serve you. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to um, finish up now. Um, we're going to delve much, much deeper into um, issues of uh, abuse, emotional, physical, mental, and sexual, on the meditation evening tomorrow. Um, it will be um, recorded, um, but I, I'm not sure when the recording will be released. Okay. At the moment, it's not available as a webcast. It's something we're looking into. Uh, it's, there's a lot of tech uh, we have to learn to, have to be able to do that. So at the moment, it's only a live event in London. Um, it's on tomorrow evening, the 27th of September. So um, I'll post the link again so you have it. That's the meditation evening. So you can go and get your tickets there. Um, yeah, there's, it, we're, we're, we're almost sold out, basically. We're almost sold out. So um, uh, grab them. It's actually cheaper if you bring a friend. So if you are with a soulmate, bring your soulmate. Trust me, it's just going to be so much easier. Because as your energy changes, you want your soulmate's energy to shift as well. So you're, you're growing and evolving together. Um, and who knows, you might make your soulmate there as well. Um, we do get guys coming to our events. And... Um, and obviously, if you're a Thaling uh, practitioner, if you've done the basic and advanced, then the Growing Relationships class is a phenomenal class. The last time I taught it, I had almost all the students were single, so I was really surprised. Um, but they were all looking to clear their fears around commitment, all their fears of why their relationships didn't last. They had relationships in the past, but they didn't last. So it's not necessarily, oh, I can't get a soulmate. It's like, well, I've had them in the past, but they never lasted. You know, maybe there was um, unrequited love, the person that you, know, you broke up with and you wish you hadn't, you're still holding on to that person which is holding you back from attracting a new soulmate. So it's a great class for singles, a wonderful class for singles to clear those blocks that, um, that's making you afraid of what we cover today. Fears of vulnerability, intimacy, and commitment. These are huge blocks to actually opening up to actually allow somebody new into your life to begin with. And then obviously we delve deeper into um, what happens once you are in a relationship, all things that can arise when you are in a long-term committed relationship so that you can keep the passion alive, the love alive, um, and that you can you can grow and evolve that love so that you're not getting bored in that relationship. So you, when you make that vow on earth to be together forever and ever, um, that you know when you're old and grey, we can still hold hands and can still kiss, we can still make love, uh, and still have lots to lots to talk about, lots to talk about. So that this lifelong companion um, that you share this, this you know the journey of life with. Um, so and so that's my wish for you. Wish my wish for you is yeah that you find that that beautiful compatible soulmate that's going to share that journey throughout life uh, and enjoy all those earthly pleasures while you're a spiritual being in a physical body spreading love that's my intention for all of you okay so i will send you the link for the um the growing relationships class if you've done if you've done the um basic and advanced course you don't need dig deeper you don't need the dig deeper course the electives you just need basic and advanced and you can attend the relationship. She arrived um, this afternoon. So she's really like Tatiana. So Tatiana um, was my host in Russia. We really connected. She's a powerful, powerful soul, an amazing manifester. You'll get to hear her story. She is like the queen of manifesting. To uh, you know, um, hear her speak. Very, very passionate about Theta Healing. Her background is a, a life coach, and uh, she's been in Theta Healing for a couple of uh, well, I think. Yeah, about a year year now and her business has really grown through the roof her classes tend to be 20 to 40 students at a time big classes um, when we had the meditation evening in, in russia we had i think it was about 400 people came to this meditation evening and we and we um we took people through through guided meditation uh, to manifest their dream life so it was really really powerful so tatiana is something really she's a very special soul definitely my soul sister someone that's very dear to my heart and a, a really great, great teacher, really great teacher. So you're in for a treat if you uh, come to the Growing Relationships class. It's a very special class because it's going to be co-taught by myself and Tatiana. Uh, so, yeah, I look forward to seeing some of my healing students at the Growing Relationships class uh, this weekend. Um, and the details are on, on the website, so I've sent you the link for that as well. 
Okay, guys, so I'm going to wrap it up. Gosh, we've gone way, way over, way, way over. Um, so, um, yeah, but thank you so much. So I hope you'll uh, join me on the meditation evening uh, tomorrow night in London at the Columbia Hotel. Uh, it starts at 8 p.m., so make sure you get there early, grab your seats, and, uh, yeah, bring a friend because um, the friend probably definitely needs this work. If they haven't been watching the Facebook Lives, they're going to be blown away, blown away. Um, you can bring a yoga mat if you like, but there'll be chairs, so be seated. But if you're a person that really wants to enjoy meditation or go on by laying down, then you can bring a yoga mat. Um, but there'll be there'll be chairs for you to sit down on um, and enjoy the evening. So I look forward to seeing you guys uh, tomorrow uh, tomorrow at the meditation evening. Uh, I will be doing another Facebook live. I'll be doing one with Tatiana, so you get to see her on Facebook live as well. So if you if you do miss the meditation evening, um, we'll do a, a mini Facebook live with Tatiana, so you get to see her, meet her, feel her energy, and see what a beautiful beautiful soul she is. I'm really excited to be working with her again. Uh, she's such a pleasure to work with. As I said, a powerful manifester. All right, well, thank you, everyone, and good night.